Hello, and welcome to the Flutist's Electroacoustic Primer, presented by the Central Ohio Flute Association. I'm Lindsay Goodman, and I'm a specialist in electroacoustic music. Let's start at the very beginning. What is electroacoustic music? Electroacoustic is a confusing word frequently attached to new music concerts with electronics but the term is the sum of its two parts. For music to be electroacoustic, there's both an electronic component and an acoustic component. And in performing this style of music, it's important to be well versed in both portions of that equation. When studying a flute and piano work, for instance, we take the time to study the piano part marking cues into our solo part, listening to recordings with the full score, and rehearsing with our collaborative pianists. The same ideas hold true when working with an electronic collaborator instead. And for that reason, a brief history of electronic music starts this dis discussion. Though musicians had been experimenting with electronic sounds for some time prior, electronic music first came to major prominence in the 1940s and 1950s through the work of three important collectives across the globe. The Groupe de Recherche Musicale in Paris, France, the Nordwestdeutsche Rundfunk studio in Cologne, Germany, and the Columbia Princeton Electronic Music Center in New York City. There, composers like Pierre Schaeffer in Paris, Karlheinz Stachhausen in Cologne, and Milton Babbitt here in the United States were initially interested in musique concrète. Musique concrète consists of recorded sounds mixed and spliced together to create purely electronic musical compositions. Out of musique concrète, other purely electronic musical forms emerged also realized without live performer participation, including computer music and tape music. As the names imply, computer music was generated using computers and synthesizers, and tape music was created by cutting and splicing tapes of recorded or computer-generated sounds into full compositions. By the 1960s, composers started putting the electro and the acoustic together. The first pieces for flute and technology were composed very soon afterwards. The very first electroacoustic piece written for flute was Mario Davidovsky's Synchronisms No. 1 in 1962 for flute and pre-recorded tape. By the 1970s, women were already creating electroacoustic compositions. And for flute, the leading composer of this genre's early days was Thea Musgrave. Musgrave's Orfeo I from 1975 is, like the Davidovsky, for flute and pre-recorded tape featuring James Galway on the recorded portion. And her Narcissus from 1987 is for flute and live processed digital delay. Narcissus is a fascinating piece from an electronic music history standpoint. It was originally written to be performed with a large digital delay machine operated by the performer's feet through a series of pedals, switches, and signals, though the work is more commonly performed today using computer software. Since these early forays into electronic music, incredible breakthroughs in technology, and inspiring composers pushing boundaries for both instruments and computers have reinvented the electronic music world multiple times over, making electroacoustic music one of the most fascinating and rapidly changing 21st century musical mediums. Knowing a bit about electronic music, the next logical question is, why should we integrate technology into our performing? Acoustic instruments and
and Human Voices have been working perfectly well for a personal musical expression since the Stone Age. And lugging around a bunch of microphones and speakers and cables and computers is a real downer compared to toting one cute little flute bag. Why should a humble flutist still using Theobald Bem's technology patented in 1847 care? The answer is so simple. We're all on our phones and our tablets and our laptops 24-7, 365. Tech company Assyrian found that people check their smartphones in excess of 96 times per day. And technology is embedded in every aspect of our lives, especially during this past year of social distancing. Whether it's to connect online with friends and family or to drive our cars for us, as flutists, we need to reflect the reality of the world we live in to connect authentically with our audiences through music. If Mozart were alive today, he would have thousands of Instagram followers and be an electroacoustic rock star. We're informed and we're convinced about the virtues of electronic music, so we're ready to roll. Let's explore the electroacoustic options for us flutists. Thankfully, we do not have to be software programming geniuses to integrate technology into our performances. We're going to explore three and a half electroacoustic options to get your next performance plugged in. The first subcategory of electroacoustic works are called fixed media pieces. This moniker grew over the years out of tape music. As time passed and technology marched forward, tape pieces became known as soundtrack and even boombox pieces until becoming known as fixed media pieces today, which harkens back to the original meaning of musique concrète. Performing these works is as easy as playing along with your favorite recording. So performers who are new to electronic music should begin here. The accompaniment never changes, which gives flutists the opportunity to practice both extreme consistency and to discover new ways of infusing each performance with innovative interpretation, both wonderful skills to enhance our overall musicianship. Fixed media works are a simple way of breaking into electroacoustic performing. And when you hit that hard lick just right with the track, you feel like a superhero. That brings us to our first musical example, Rob Deemer's The Road from Hana. In this work, the fixed media is a flute choir of 12 alto flutes, which I recorded individually. The tracks were then mixed to create the accompanying soundtrack.
nestled under fixed media for our and a half count are works which involve click tracks. These are a lot like playing with everyone's favorite flute improvement tool, the metronome. Some fixed media pieces, especially those which involve multiple performers, have click tracks which facilitate practicing and performing with the soundtrack. And very convenient pieces have click tracks at multiple slower practice tempos in addition to the track at the performance tempo. Click tracks make performing with fixed media feel fail safe. And the bonus is that you look like a rock star playing with a headphone over one ear. The next subgenre of electroacoustic works involve reverb, an effect which has been utilized in this style of flute music since Musgrave's Narcissus. Reverb technology has thankfully come a long way since the 1980s. Today, many software platforms make realizing digital delay and reverb effects easy with most laptops and a good microphone or a foot pedal. For overall reverb, a digital audio workstation or DAW installed onto a laptop provides a large range of customizable reverb options. These include software programs like Ableton Live, Digital Performer, GarageBand, Logic Pro, and Pro Tools, each of which include hundreds of customizable reverberation options. A variety of delay effects are sometimes also called for in electroacoustic music most often realized with the help of a digital delay foot pedal. And as an alternative to DAWs, reverb can also be generated with live processing, which we'll discuss next. This brings us to our second musical example, Roger Zahab's Suspicion of Nakedness for solo flute with reverb. And this includes reverb from my DAW of choice, Logic Pro to wrap my flute in a subtle halo of reverberation.
most exciting electroacoustic subset, especially because it continues to develop and grow constantly as adventuresome composers and computer programmers design more and new ways for our computers to interact with our flutes. We're accustomed to our phones responding to our spoken requests, and live processing is a way to expand on that relationship using the flute instead. With live electronics pieces, composers use software programs like MaxMSP, Pure Data, and Audacity to capture the sound of the flute and then process it into real-time accompaniments which respond to individual interpretations allowing for chamber music with a computer. Depending on the work or the specific event within a work, this may involve cueing a software event with a foot pedal at an indicated place in the score, starting a fixed media file which runs simultaneously with the live music, or even hitting a prescribed pitch in the score on the flute which the computer then captures and manipulates. If a composer can dream it, she can do it. And suddenly you'll be on stage by yourself playing chamber music with a laptop. This brings us to our third and final musical example, Eleni Lilios's Sleep's Undulating Tide for flute and live interactive electroacoustics. This piece includes a famous musical quote from Gluck's Minuet and Dance of the Blessed Spirits, as well as a number of extended techniques.
of snow surging seas. Oh, to be that unnoticed and that necessary. At some point, I hope that you'll want to give this exciting medium a try. Electroacoustic music can feel intimidating. With the extra equipment and skill sets necessary, in addition to just playing the flute. But there's good news. When you're ready to dip your toe into the electroacoustic ocean, you don't need as much equipment or know-how as you might think to get started. Electroacoustic options can be broken down into what I call light, regular, and full fat options so that you can assess which avenue is right for you to begin an electronic adventure. Light electroacoustic options can still include everything from fixed media through live processed works, provided that you trust your performing venue and your audio engineer. Fixed media pieces are a great way to start out with electroacoustic music because performing is as easy as having someone off stage press play on your favorite device for an audio file. And most performance venues have some sort of USB or aux connection already hardwired into their house sound system to easily connect your the device. Many house soundboards also have reverb options built in. So, with the help of a friendly audio engineer, some reverb works may also be accessible. Even live processed pieces may be possible without getting your hands too dirty with the technology. Most composers expect 
that live processed pieces will be performed with the assistance of a separate technician on the computer since most performers aren't well versed with live processing software. It's still very important to make sure that you have taken the necessary time to understand the sounds that the software will create and that you're very patient with sound checks and tech rehearsals to produce an excellent end result. Any electroacoustic performance is only as good as the preparation you put into the technology as well as the flute part, in addition to the faith that you have in the physical equipment and the audio technician. Moving on to regular electroacoustic performing, taking electroacoustic pieces one big step further is easy by plugging in a good quality condenser microphone onto a boom stand into the house sound system, quickly allowing the flute to become part of the electronic sound world. This medium really comes to life when there are fewer barriers between the two components, marrying the acoustic flute with the electronics to enhance the audience's experience of the music. A good rule of thumb to strive for is about 50% live flute sound and about 50% amplified flute sound. Three pieces of advice anytime you're working with a microphone. First, ensure that your microphone is positioned behind your speakers to avoid any feedback. Second, opt for a condenser microphone on a boom stand over a portable microphone option. Headset, lavalier, and even head joint microphones are all wonderful and indispensable for providing movement options around a performance space. But from that close proximity, extraneous mouth and breathing noises are sent out to the audience. And the warmth and resonance of the full flute is lost. The six to 10 inches between your flute and your microphone provide the audience with that full glory of the flute tone in a way that a close mounted microphone cannot. Third, know your microphone. Every mic responds to the flute differently. So either request the same make and model of microphone each time you perform electroacoustic music or own your own. As you can tell, I practice a full fat style of electroacoustic performing. It's a risk to rely on the varied house sound systems and the varied expertise of audio technicians in different performing venues. So I own all of my equipment and I take it with me wherever possible. It's surprisingly easy and freeing and it all fits into the trunk of a standard sedan. In addition to a great microphone, knowing your own speakers helps to create consistency in your sound from venue to venue. Placing those speakers up on stands helps to send out to the audience on the right and left at ear level. Other than a microphone, the most important piece of electroacoustic gear is a simple plain black box, an audio interface. This connects the microphone and the laptop out to the speakers using Mighty XLR cable. You simply fire up the software on your laptop for fixed media, playback, live processing, or reverb for any type of electroacoustic performing. Welcome to being an instant one flutist band. The only thing you can't do by yourself is check for balances. Because even trying as hard as you can, you will never be able to play flute on stage and hear yourself in the hall at the same time. Even a full fat electroacoustic performer needs an excellent set of friendly ears out in the hall in advance of a performance 
to help set levels and balances. So always set up some trusted tech help in advance of your electroacoustic performances. We've had an introduction to electronic music, a tour of the subsets of electroacoustic genres, and found out how to perform these pieces with as much or as little hands-on technology as is comfortable. So it's time to find some repertoire that speaks to you. All of the pieces in my personal electroacoustic repertoire are available on my YouTube channel at www.youtube.com backslash Lindsay Goodman fans. These include works with fixed media, reverb, live processing, commissioned pieces, pre-existing works, works for flute alone, electroacoustic chamber pieces, and even an electroacoustic concerto. Additionally, Sarah Louise Basingthwaite's online electroacoustic compendium weighs in at over 620 compositions currently. There is an electroacoustic piece out there for every taste and skill set. Once you've decided to perform electronic music in the future, begin investing in the gear that you'll require for light, regular, or full fat performings. Most electroacoustic pieces can be performed with just a microphone, a boom stand, an audio interface, a laptop, and a house sound system. So if this performing genre is of interest to you, begin small and grow your collection as your passion develops, adding speakers, foot pedals, and other hardware as needed. Both my complete annotated equipment list and my complete annotated repertoire list are available upon request via email. Send a note to me at lindsay at lindsaygoodman.com and I'm happy to share those resources with you. It's incredibly exciting to stand on that cutting edge intersection of music and technology as composers develop new sounds and experiences with electroacoustic music. This genre puts us on the cusp of the newest musical innovations and makes performing solo as a one flutist band possible through a wide variety of musical styles. This genre dazzles audiences and is so fun. I hope that learning about this genre and hearing musical examples has you excited to explore electroacoustic music in the future.